Thanks for tuning in to our First Lutheran webpage. Pastor John here. We're in the series called It's Go Time. It's, it's our time as a church to be about the mission that Jesus has given us to do. And today it's, it's about Trinity Sunday, that we believe the message we have is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is very unique to all the religions of the world. And so our message today is this. With Go Time, it's also time to get to know God better. And that's what he always wants us to do, is to get to know him better. So if you have your Bible, we'll look at some people who wanted to get to know him better. First, there's Isaiah. Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Paul prays a prayer for us to have that. Ephesians 1, 1 15 to 19. And then the best one is John 3, 1 to 17, Nicodemus. So get ready for a powerful message from Pastor Anthony. I know this one's for you. Hi, and welcome. You're back with another powerful message with First Lutheran Church. Do me a favor, if you're joining us live on Facebook, like and share this message so that your friends and family can be blessed all week long by today's message. Happy Memorial Day. This Monday, let's take time and remember those who have lost their lives serving our country and fighting for our liberties. Our offices will be closed on Monday and there will be no Bible studies on Monday evening. Enjoy your day. Let's not forget to support our military troops with the Bible sticks. There'll be a donation at the back door. Sign up for Scuba VBS. It's going to be June 10th through the 13th. There's registration on our website and there's also a table where you can register right here in-house. You still have a couple of weeks during the month of May where we are collecting breakfast items. We'll be taking the donations to our local food pantries. We have a new grief group starting on June 8th at 12 p.m. This class will be ran by Gloria Fields. Contact Gloria or myself here at the church for more information. Join Gloria on this journey as she helps others through their journey to heal through their grief. A pre-planning seminar will be held here at the church June 5th at 1030 a.m. This seminar will be hosted by Angela Looney and the Smith Funeral Home. Contact myself or Angela Looney if you want more information about this amazing opportunity. Lunch is provided. You guys, our connect cards are there for you and they're also there for us. We'd love for you to fill them out so that we can know that you're worshiping with us and that we can know um, how we can pray for you. There's nothing too big and there's nothing too small, even if it's just your name. We are noticing that some of you aren't filling them out. Let's do a better job. It's time for service to start. Pastor John, you know what to do. All right. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is the pre-planning seminar is its what you can do for your children. The older ones, what happens is I, I deal with people when death comes and people aren't ready and then the children start fighting. No, mom, what do I want? Dad, dad, no, mom liked you more. No, all this thing and all is chaos. But if you have it, everything all set out, it blesses them. Angela wants you to know what are the details that will know so you're not afraid to do it. You don't have to do it through them. But it's a part of the stewardship of life of blessing people when you go because you're going to be so blessed. But you don't want to leave chaos when you leave. So help people by doing it and having it all set for them. So let's rise. Let's get ready to pray. I want to say on Memorial Day weekend, we are thankful for the sacrifice that people gave so we can live in this land. And it's, it's a reminder of what the Lord has done for us. He... He gave the perfect sacrifice so we can live in his land as his people. And wherever we are is the kingdom. Amen. It's not just later. It's right here, right now. And we are thankful for that. That's why we worship. Everything that comes out of our life comes not of obligation, but thanksgiving and praise and thank you out of love that we have received from him. And so today, one of the things that we're thankful for, it's called Trinity Sunday on the church calendar. Our church father said, hey, take half the year and focus on Jesus. His prophecies of his coming, his birth, his miracles, his ministry, his suffering, his death, his resurrection, his after Easter stuff with his disciples. And then focus on 
how you live that out. That's called the Pentecost season. And we're in the season on go time. Well, they put in a Sunday after Pentecost is Trinity Sunday. Is we are thankful we know the true God. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not Allah somewhere out there or many gods. It's the only true God. And that's a part of who we are. So we know Him and could share Him faithfully. So let's give Him praise. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank all three, and we know that you are one. In love, Father, you sent your Son into this world to be our Savior. You so loved the world. Jesus, in love, you came, and you laid down your life. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for his friends. And Holy Spirit, you came, and you filled us with that love so we could receive it and walk in it. Live it out in faith. As you inspired the Apostle Paul, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. That's the way we want to live. So we honor you in this place as our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are great, you are glorious, and you are worthy to be praised. So receive the praise of your people this day. In your name, Jesus. Amen. You give life. You are love.
for all that you have done for me, Jesus. For all that you have done for the whole world in coming and giving up your life for us. We give you our praise and our worship today. You are our Savior and our King. And you invite us today into your light. No darkness. Your presence, which lights up our life this morning. You meet us here in the most wonderful way to forgive and to strengthen us, to encourage us to go and to follow you where you will lead us. What a king you are, Jesus, to lay down your life for your friends, for all of us who are unworthy of it, and yet you love us that much. And so through your spirit this morning, Jesus, give us what we need. Make us hungry for your word. Make us thirsty for more of you, the life-giving water. Fill us up. In your name we pray. Amen.
want to touch you. We lift our voices higher and higher and higher to you. We lift our holy hands up. We want to touch you. We lift our voices higher and higher and higher. Nothing else satisfies in this world. You. You want more of you. Go ahead and be seated. We want to touch you. We lift our voices higher and higher and higher to you. <laughs> Reggie's in the right frame of mind. It's, we are here to receive. That's the position we live in all the time. More of you, what you have, who you are. Come on in and take over and fill us up because only you can satisfy. Did you know that's the secret of life? You know, when things are going bad and you're getting frustrated and all this stuff going on on the inside. You know what the issue is? I'm hungry for you. We've taken our focus and said, I think that's going to fill me and make me happy. And they're not making me happy. And I'm not going to be filled. And I'm not going to be, I'm going to not be satisfied with all these things. It's not any of that stuff. It's only him. He's the only one who can do it. And that's why he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Guess where that comes from? Jesus. Guess who the Bible's all about? Jesus. Guess who's coming again? Jesus. Guess who is the bread of life? Jesus. Guess what he's going to feed us with today? Jesus. So let's just take time personally to say, Jesus, I want more of you. Come fill me up. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty for even more of what you have for me. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we confess that our life journey has often taken us to different buffets, places where we thought we could feast and really be satisfied and enjoy a meal. But the things we ate, the things we consumed, the things that we we're looking for never had any power to do anything but to leave us more empty 
so that through it you would draw us to you in desperation. Say, Lord, it's you. You're the one we need. You're the one we want. Eternity has been put in our hearts and only you can fill that spot. And when you fill us up, our life becomes full and overflowing with gratitude and thanks and praise, with love and joy and peace and patience, with, with you, with your Father as you come to live in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our home is full because you come to dwell. So, Lord, we're here today to say we just want more. More of what you have, more of what you give, more of the abundant life. So open our eyes, open our hearts, Holy Spirit. Set a fire in our soul that we can't contain and can't control. That everything you pour into us fills us up and then flows out for everyone around us. Then you'll be glorified. Then you'll be lifted up. Then all people can be drawn to you. So Lord, have your way in us first so that we can take it out to the world. In your name, Jesus. Amen. It's really that simple. Get it in. Overflows and out it comes. We are hungry and thirsty for more of you, Lord. So, Lord, bless our children. They're excused for kids' church. We have a winner. Second, third, fourth place. All right, Lord Jesus, bless the children as they receive your word as you grow them and give them that hunger and thirst always for you in their life. And bless us through your word today. Feed us because you are the bread of life. In your name, Jesus, amen. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. I think the Holy Spirit is in the house today. <laughs> All right, our scripture lessons today are a uh, first lesson from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Our epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 19a. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This is the word of the Lord. All right. Isaiah, there are two things that happened. I just want you to point, see, see this. He saw the Lord high and exalted. That's where we need to live every day. He is everything of everything. We see him high and exalted. And then the second thing is he received a touch from the Lord. He had an encounter not only with his eyes, but it touched him. It was a touch of grace. He forgave his sin. 
And there was only one thing Isaiah could do. He says, I got to go. Send me. That's how it works. What the Lord will do for one, he'll do for all. So let's rise for our gospel reading today. It's another encounter. Jesus with a man named Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has, been, who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Mm -hmm. This is the gospel of our Lord. Fill out your Connect cards. You can bring them up. If you brought an offering, we're collecting for military Bible sticks. There's an extra plate there for that if you want to give to that. We sing an old song, but really fits today's message. It's called In the Secret.
Lord, that's our prayer. We want to know you more. Amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. Want to know him more. Amen. I tell you, um, I think you guys want to know him more. You know how I know? Because you're here today. And we know that you're not here by accident. But you're here by God's divine providence. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for this time and this hour, Father. I decrease that you may increase, Lord Father God. We uh, lift you up that you may be glorified and the enemy may be terrified, Father, by your spoken word. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you and on this morning. Amen and amen. Look here. I am fired up about our sermon series. The sermon series is, it's go time. It is time to go. And anybody know Pastor Anthony, I like to go. I am always on the go. As a matter of fact, I'm on the go so much, my wife had to tell me to slow down. That I'm doing too much. But it's for us, guys, it is go time in the mission. It's go time for us. That's why, you know, um, Jesus told us in Matthew 28, it says, he told his disciples and us, he says, therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them that they may obey everything that I have commanded. So we have a job to do. The disciples in us, he told us to go and make disciples to all nations and teaching them to obey everything that he commanded. So as we go in mission, as we teach, let us know that guess what? We're going to have to be patient with some people as we are delivering this gospel. When I said patience, that means we can't give up on people. We cannot give up on people when it's time to go in mission. When we're delivering God's message, we ought to preach it to all nations, to everybody that we come in contact, that they are to be baptized. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we ought to teach them to obey everything. And watch this. While doing it, guess what? He goes on to say, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. So as we go, guess what? We're not alone. Christ is with us. That's why last week it was so important the message Pastor Pete preached is go time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing we can do. In our going, we will get destroyed by the evil one if we're not filled with the, his Holy Spirit. That's why we learned last week that is, we have to be empowered and equipped to engage in the mission. So today, we're going to be talking about it's go time. It's time to know God better. Do y'all agree with that? That it's time to know God better. I did a wedding the other day, and I, the groom, I thought I knew him. For years, I thought I knew him until it was time for his wedding. I got to spend time with him. He got to spend time with me. So we got to know each other a whole lot better. It's the same way it is with Christ. Once we spend time with him, we get to know him a whole lot better. And guess what? He wants us to know him better. He know us, but he wants us to know him better. That's why in Paul prayer, Paul says, I pray to the Father that he give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. That the Father give you his wisdom, that we receive the wisdom from God, the revelation from God to know him better. You know, they asked Peter, they said, Peter, who do, who do men say that I am? Peter said, some say this, some say that. But Christ said, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the son of the living God. He said, man didn't give you that. 
Only my Father in heaven can reveal that to you. There are some things, guys, that God wants to reveal to us. But we got to know him better. We need his wisdom on how to take on life on life terms. Because in our own thinking, guess what? We can really mess it up. That's why he said, I pray that in your mission as you go, that we have the wisdom of God and the revelation of God when it comes to spreading the gospel. And not only that, Paul continued to pray that our eyes and our hearts be enlightened in order that we may know the hope which he has called you. The hope of eternity in heaven. That this world is passing away. As we go, we are making disciples. I told him earlier, I got family members that I want to see saved. I got friends I want to see saved. I got a lot of people that I know that I want to be saved. So as I go, my eyes have to be enlightened, right? And I'm giving them the hope of Jesus Christ, that this world is passing away, that heaven is our home, that this stuff that we're looking at is temporary. See, in the natural eye, we don't see that. In the natural eye, we see everything going on around us. But when our eyes are open up spiritually and we get God's revelation, we see that all this is going on around us in the world is just a huge, big facade. That's all it is. Pastor always tells us when the curtains come down, we're going to be like, wow, is that what it really was all about? It wasn't about my career. It wasn't about my kids. It wasn't about this. It wasn't about, it was all about you. Yes, the whole time, it's all about him. That's why we need to know him better. As a matter of fact, if I took a poll right now and said, what is the greatest thing in life? I'm sure some people, I will get law, a bunch of different answers of what's what considered to be the greatest thing in life. I'm sure, you know, just off the cuff, some people would say, my kids, uh, my job, this, that. It's the greatest thing in life. Not to discredit any of those things, but as for Christians, I would think the greatest thing in life is to know Christ better. That should be the greatest thing in life for us, is that we have a desire to hunger and to thirst for righteousness, to know Christ better. Matter of fact, Paul says something that was really interesting. Paul says something. He says in Ephesians 3, he says, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Mm. He says, the love of God that passes knowledge. See, sometimes we can get so educated that we can think we know something. Cassidy, you remember that one? That we think we know something. And that's a dangerous spot for Christians, to think we know something. You see, the love of Christ surpasses knowledge, right? So once we think we know something, we can get so relaxed, so relaxed. But God said, I want you to know the fullness of God, the fullness of me. It's outside of knowledge. It's bigger than book knowledge. It's a bigger picture. So knowing God, knowing God is so much bigger of a picture that it's, a, it's an intimate relationship. That's what he want with us. To know Christ better is to have an intimate relationship with him. In Genesis 4, it talks about Adam and Eve, how they got to know each other. And that getting to know is an intimate relationship that you know each other very, very well. I use the example of my wife, how she know me. Like we go out to eat and I would try to place my order, right? And as the waitress or waiter would ask me what I would like, 
my wife was proceeded to tell her what I would like. <laughs> now, watch this. Now, sometime I, I venture out and there's some things I want to try to sample and try out. And she know that I'm not going to like that. But I'm going to try it anyway. But she trumped me and said, no, he don't want that. This is what he wants. Because she know me. It's the same way with Christ, man. Our relationship should be so intimate that he know us and we know him so well that we know what's of God and what's not of God. That our relationship with him is so intimate that as we walk and as we talk and as we move around, it's just like we're, we're, with, we're, with, we're with Christ everywhere we go. Our relationship with him is that, that close. And he wants us to have that relationship with him, with an open heart and a willing heart, wanting to hunger and thirst for more of him. But sometimes we get to know God better through crises that come up in our life. I got to know God a whole lot better because of crisis in my life. See, I was that one that thought I knew something, right? In the church, doing church business, doing church work, thinking I know something about God. But see, once you get relaxed of thinking you know something and you stop getting educated, you stop learning, you stop getting to know more of him, the enemy comes in. And he will take rule over your life. If you're not careful, that's why I said it's dangerous of thinking you know something because we should be forever learning about Christ, forever learning. There's more to know. He says he takes us from glory to glory to glory. There's more to learn. There's more to know about Christ. Our pastor is still in school. He's wanting to know more about him. If the pastor wants to know more about him. Hello? <laughs> to know more about him. But crisis will make you call out to Christ. And that's where I was at. I had to call out to him. And I got to know Christ a whole lot better. And I want to let you know that the crisis that we go through in life, as Wayne Rowland would say, the world does not revolve around you. It's much bigger. The things that we go through in life, as I look back over my life, I can see where God was going to use me as his hands and feet to accomplish certain things. He's wanting to use each and every one of us, but we need to get to know him better. So what I seen was is that once we get to know Christ better, we know it's all about the mission. It's all about the mission. My crisis wasn't about me. It was about the mission. There were souls that needed to hear this gospel. There was places I needed to be for him. It wasn't so much about me. You look at Isaiah in our reading today. Isaiah said, in the year that, I, in the year that Uz, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Isaiah was not in a comfortable spot. Isaiah was in a crisis, but he knew who to cry out to. He cried out to God. And as he cried out to God, guess what? God showed him himself. You see, when we get to know God better, God will show us ourselves better. And Isaiah, the first thing he said was, whoa, it's me. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell amongst a people with unclean lips. And our God is so loving and so gracious that he showed grace and ministered to Isaiah. And that's what Isaiah says. He said, whom shall I send? He says, send me, I'll go. You see, once you've had a touch from the master and he healed you and he delivered you, 
you have no problem with saying, Lord, send me, I'll go. And that's what Isaiah was. He wanted to know God better. And as he got to know God better, God said, listen, there's work to do. And I need somebody to do it. And Isaiah said, I'll go. So I'm asking you today, do you want to know God better? Do you want to go? So as we move into our gospel lesson, we see where Nicodemus in the, in the um, chosen, they call him Nick. Nick. Nicodemus wanted to know God better. He really wanted to know God better. You see, Jesus was on the move in our gospel lesson. Remember, he was, he's on his way to Calvary. His disciples and him, it's go time. It's not time to be sitting around, but it's go time. But here comes this Pharisee, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus wanted to know more about God. Not that he didn't know God. You see, in John 3, it says, now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who's, who was a member of the Jewish uh, uh, ruling council. He came to Jesus at night, and he asked him, he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. See, Nicodemus, he knew of God. But there's three things that I got from Nicodemus. The first thing is Nicodemus was humble. Remember, Nicodemus was a, uh, a ruler, a teacher of the law, a Pharisee. He knew the Torah. He knew the word. He could have easily had the big head. Have you ever known anybody that know everything and you can't tell them anything? <laughs> I mean, nothing. Nicodemus could have easily been that guy. He had people coming to him for his counsel. He could have took pride in himself. But Nicodemus humbled himself because he wanted to know more about this God. He's seen Jesus perform these miracles and these signs, and he know that, listen, I know what I can do, but what you're doing got to be from God. So Nicodemus wanted to know. He humbled himself. Secondly, not only did Nicodemus humble himself, but Nicodemus knew that it was not intellectual knowledge that he was doing this. He knew it was from God. It was bigger than book knowledge. There's nothing wrong with book knowledge. Book knowledge is very key. But I'm telling you, when it comes to wisdom and God's revelation, it trumps book knowledge all day, every day. See, you put it, see, book knowledge is when we put it on a paper, it adds up. But when it's God's working, when you put it on paper, it don't add up. But it happens. It's not intellectual knowledge. It's not something that you're going to try to figure it out in your head. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You got to have faith to believe in God. It's bigger than book knowledge. So many people get lost because they can't find it in the book. It's in the book. But it's bigger than book knowledge. Not only that he knew it was more than intellectual, but he knew that he had to have an open mind. Remember, God was explaining it to him. He was explaining earthly things to him. He said, if you don't understand the earthly things, how can you explain, ex, ex, uh, 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 understand heavenly things? And besides that, Nicodemus, you're a teacher of the law. You should know these things. But Nicodemus had an open mind. And so Jesus began to talk to him to where he can understand. When he began to talk about the Torah, it knew, it, it got Nicodemus' attention, I'm sure. And Jesus says this, he says, no one has ever gone to the Father except the one who came from him, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. He got 
his attention when he said, just like Moses lifting up the snake in the wilderness, lifting up that snake, once they looked at it, they was forgiven of their sins, right? So it got his attention. And he's saying, the son of man, me, this mission that I'm on, where we're going, I'm going to be lifted up. Not only that, he says, I, did, I came the God that you worship sent me. He said, God sent his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, I came not to destroy the world, basically, but to save the world. That's what he was trying to get across to Nicodemus. Nicodemus wanted to know him better. And he was telling him, this is what I'm here for, to save the world. I'm not here to overtake Rome. I'm here to save the souls of the lives of people. So once we get to know God better, we know that's our mission. It's go time. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news or watching what's going on, <coughs> but it's go time. It's really go time. It's, the things are turning up. I mean, faster and faster and faster as we speak for Christ to return. I mean, it really don't take anything for him to return. Everything is set in place. The question is, do we know him? But the big question is, are we ready? Are we ready for Christ's return? When he come, will he catch us on the go, spreading the gospel? Or when he come, will he catch us in our recliner? Will he catch us about our father's business? Once we get to know God better, we know that everything means nothing if it don't include God. If it don't include God, it don't mean nothing. I mean, it really. Everything else is out of the picture. To know God better, we need to be in his word, in Bible study, busting these doors open as often as we can. In his word, getting to know him. Isn't it something when we read God's word, once we do a Bible study, we study God's word, you feel better? It's something about God's word. You can read a Sports Illustrated all day. And the only thing you don't get is statistics and all this different stuff. But if you read God's word, it is food for our soul. It do us well to know God better. So our take, on home, take homes today is as we know God better, there's three things we can take home with us. The first thing, as we know God better, we can receive his wisdom in mission. We can see the wisdom of God in mission. In order to deliver this message and preach this message and deliver this message, we need the wisdom of God on how to do it. We may think we know, but we need God's wisdom. We need his help. As a matter of fact, the scripture says in James, he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask, and God gives it generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. Just ask. God, I don't know what to do in this situation. Give me your wisdom, Lord. I don't, I don't know how to handle this situation that I'm facing this week. How am I to handle it? Everything we do, we need God's wisdom. Even from putting together a piece of equipment you know, my son, he had, a, he had his first child, and he was putting together a, a little baby um, stroller thing, and he couldn't get it. So he asked my wife, and she said, have you prayed about it? He said, you know, I hadn't prayed about it. He went and prayed about it, came back, and got it all done. But everything we do, guess what? We need God's wisdom to do it. S secondly, as I know God better, I can receive his revelation. 
his revelation, his revelation, the, the, the revelation of knowing what he is telling us, revelation knowledge is sometimes, we, like I said, with wisdom, we don't know what to say. With revelation knowledge, he give us what to say. Sometimes I've been up, a lot of times, I've been up speaking, and sometimes I don't know why I say some of the things I say. But God gives me what to say. I've stepped into meetings. I've stepped into different, I don't know what to say, Lord. Lord, just you do you. I don't know. And sometimes God gives us revelation on when to speak and when not to speak. Do you know there is a time to be quiet? Took me a long time to get that one. Yeah. There's a time. God might give us the right thing to say, but the revelation of it is, guess what? It's not the time to say it. But when we know God better, we know when it's time. Thirdly, as I know God better, I can show his glory. In 1 Corinthians, it says, so whatever you, you, whatever you drink or whatever you, uh, whatever you drink or eat or do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything we do, we ought to do it for the glory of God. It's preaching. you preaching for the glory of God. Picking up a piece of paper off the floor, you're doing it for the glory of God. Everything we do is for the glory of God. I always say, I told him in first service, I want in 180 youth, I want the youth to catch me doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? To catch me doing the right thing. Not the wrong thing, but the right thing that God may be glorified. Everything we do is to glorify God. And once we know him, we know that God get the glory. And when God gets the glory, guess what? We don't become glory stillers. We become glory revealers. We don't steal God's glory. We give God glory. Amen? So today as I take my seat, the question is, do you want to know God better? Some people, someone may say, well, you know, I'm here today and I don't even really think I know God. Today is a good day to get to know him. You might be here today and you might say, you know, my walk with Christ has been kind of slack. Today is the day to turn it up. Today is the day to let's go. Today is the day to get started. You know, it's, it's amazing in life how, you know, it's go time. And we can procrastinate things and put things off. And I've been guilty for putting things off. Today, guys, whatever we do, don't put this off. This series is go time. And where we at as a body of Christ, man, things are more serious than what we really think it is. That's why we need to be filled with this wisdom and revelation. See, we can't believe everything we see and everything we hear. That's why we need to hear from God and have his revelation to know him better. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you as my prayer. Amen. As Anthony was preaching in all the different services, it, the thought came to me is what's been going on is you can hear about Jesus, you, you can get it up here, of course it has to get in here, but one of the big issues is people have never really seen what it really looks like. They didn't see it growing up where people were just so madly in love with God and we're so generous and we're always out talking about Jesus to everybody. You see, they grew up where they didn't really learn a lot like a father to show them what it is. They didn't, they didn't learn, maybe even from 
fellow believers, you know, when, what, what the passion of the Lord really looks like. See, the way it's supposed to work is everybody behind us is supposed to start at our ceiling, and that becomes their floor. That's the way the early church did it. That's why it went out and, and got to grow, and now it's shrinking because it hasn't been revealed Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. It's, man, you'll see the fruit. You'll see, you'll see what this thing really looks like. I've become all things to all men so as to win some. So I think the Lord's calling us to be people who live as light and salt, who show the world what it's really like to really know him and to walk with him. So let's stand for prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you took time to show the disciples how it's done. We want to be the kind of people who show the world what it's like to follow you, to know you more, to grow in our faith and our life in you to the point where we're just living in the overflow. And it flows out for the world to see. So help us to grow in revelation knowledge of you to know you more, to love you more, to serve you more, to worship you more, to fall more in love so that when the day you come, it's an easy step to the next place. In your name, Jesus. I pray you're richly blessed by the message today, especially how we get to know God more when we're going through hard times. He really reveals his true nature in those times when he has our attention. We want to be a blessing to you in those times or whenever for you to know God better. Feel free to give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. Love to pray with you, encourage you. Also, watch us live on Facebook. We're on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 Central Time here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. So join us. See what God is doing. Look forward to seeing you again. There's more go time ahead. See you next.